Howdy. In today's video, I want to talk about asthma, particularly my case with it. So, as a young child, I can't remember exactly what age or how old I was, but I developed a pretty serious case of asthma. Now, most asthma sufferers, they are prescribed an inhaler, a carrier inhaler, so you can just take it with you on the go. But for the first six months to a year, I'm not sure how long, it was. this was a long time ago, bear in mind, my asthma was so severe that I was actually, the doctors, they, they prescribed me this machine kit where I had to, twice a day initially, uh, wear, wear this mask, basically. And my, my parents would set it up. They, 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 there were these sachets of liquid that they would basically put into this machine or whatever, and then that liquid would turn into gas or something like that, and then I would inhale that gas in. So yeah, twice a day for maybe the first six months, and then at some stage, I went down to once a day. And this, this carried on for a while. I think it was a year, but I can't really recall right now. I don't think I was born with asthma either. I th I'm not, because I, I, remember, I, I remember distinctly not having asthma, and then at some stage, I just, it just developed. But anyway, having asthma caused numerous difficulties for me growing up. It made me incredibly unfit. I was always short of breath, even after running short distances. Uh, this meant that in any sort of, you know, sporting activity, or even just on the playground in general, when doing activities like, you know, tag or hide and seek, etc, etc. I was not a popular choice. <laughs> I was usually one of the last, if not the last person picked for any sort of team-based game that required, you know, high mobility, you know, running around and such. And when we used to play football, I was always stuck in goal because I couldn't really run around that much. Subsequently, I did become a pretty good goalkeeper, though, back in those days, if I do say so myself. But anyway, after, after using this machine, and I was given a regular inhaler that, you know, most people carry with them. And, you know, eventually, my asthma more or less, you know, was cured. The problem that I still had was that I, I still couldn't sort of take that full deep breath of air. I mean, I wasn't coughing all the time, which was great, but I, I still couldn't sort of breathe completely fully, if that, make, if that makes sense. And when I was about 17 years old, I had a bit of a relapse of my asthma. It crept back. Now, I wasn't coughing or anything like that, but I could feel the tightness in my chest and in my body when I, when, I was breath, when I was breathing. That sort of tightness came back. And I remember one time, me and a few college mates, we were, we were playing basketball at a park basically. And I invited my dad to join us because he used to be a sort of a national level basketball player back in the day. So I thought, I thought I'd be fine, you know. But anyway, yeah, so he, we're both on the court. And after a couple of um, drills or whatever, a couple of shots were made, a few points were scored, um, me and my dad were both like utterly dead. And bearing in mind, my dad's like over 50 by this, by this stage. He's like a 50 year old man and I'm not even 20. And I distinctly remember we both looked at each other and he basically says to me, you're as, what, you're as dead as I am. And I had nothing to say back because it was, it was true. 
we were both as exhausted as each other, even though we had both been on the court for the same time. And the time span that we were on was not even that long. It was like, what, 10 minutes of play, of, of game time, if that, maybe, maybe 15 minutes. Nothing significant, though. At this point, I, I kind of knew something had to change. I had to do something about this, this, this asthma. I could not allow this to cripple me any further. And I also remember, this is a bit of an embarrassing story. If, if the previous story wasn't embarrassing, this one's even worse. <laughs> but anyway, at the age of 19, I graded to black belt in Shodokan Karate. And a few months after this, I went to Australia on a holiday to visit some of my family over there. And I, while I was over there, I wanted to continue my training. So I found a local club. In fact, this was actually the very first club I ever trained at way back when. But anyway, yeah, so I'm training at this club and the first drill that the instructor gives the class is to do 50 sit-ups and 50 push-ups. Now the sit-ups are fine, I managed to sit-ups, like, they were okay, no problem. But the push-ups, man, oh man, I did five push-ups and then my, my arms just died, basically. <laughs> I couldn't do any more. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I eventually got to the end, but like, I finished dead last. I was the last person in the class to finish the full 50 sit-ups and 50 push-ups. I was behind people who were much older than me. I was behind people who were lower ranked than me, even white belts. I am not joking, I was the, literally the last person who finished that beginning exercise. And I remember the class was, you know, they're, they're looking at me, you know, I've got, I'm wearing a black belt. And there's this guy who's just, he just doesn't have any upper body strength or whatever. It, it wasn't good. And we, we did some other drills as well. And again, there was, a, there was this other drill where basically someone holds onto your legs. And you have to basically crawl across, across the dojo using your arms while your legs are suspended in midair. You're doing like a, you're walking with your hands basically. And again, I remember I got around halfway across the dojo before I collapsed. And once again, like everyone else was able to complete the drill. Older people, young, lower belts, younger people, just everyone else, you know, got there in the end. Got to the end before I did. And at this stage, the instructor, the sensei, he came over to me and he pointed to one of the green belts and he said, do you see that guy over there? He's a green belt and he's over 40 years old. He's double your age, but yet he has made it to the end before you. And the sensei wasn't trying to, you know, demean me or put me down or discourage me. He was just stating the facts. And the facts were clear as day. I was weak. I had no upper body strength. This had to change. I could not be like this anymore. I felt humiliated big time. And at that point, I vowed to myself that I would never, ever allow something like this to happen to me again. Ever. And this was the moment that brought about the rise of my latest book, Home Workout, though at the time I did not know it. So after this incident, I spent every, basically every day just doing push-ups at home. And my, it started slow, you know, I started with only being able to do five, then only being able to, you know, crawl up to ten then the 15, then the 20, you know, slowly, slowly building the numbers up. And eventually, I remember, you know, I was training regularly while I was in Australia. And like a month, a month later, 
uh, we, did, we did the same warm up again, and I basically blasted through it. You know, I smashed the sit ups, I smashed the push ups as well. You know, I, I finished, I wasn't, first, I wasn't the first one to finish, but I was like the third or the fourth, maybe. You know, I was definitely, you know, up in the top percentile, as it were. And the sensei came over to me and he, be, he, be, he congratulated me, he said, Your fitness has improved a lot. And there's been very few times in my life where praise has positively affected me to such an extent and you know I, I can say I can honestly say that that was one of those very few times you know getting his acknowledgement was a real hard earned victory for me but anyway the point of this story where, where I'm going with all this is the start of my home workout routine was the beginning of my counter-attack against this relapse of, of my asthma. So over the years, I started experimenting with different exercises to get myself into better shape, basically, and try and circumvent the effects of the difficult breathing I was having due to my asthma. And a couple of things really helped me. One is that I changed my style of karate. This was, I'm jumping ahead a few years now. So I, I got my black belt when I was 19, my first black belt. And then we're gonna skip a few years to after I graduated from university. So I am almost 22 at this point. And upon graduating, I'm, ba I'm back at home now. Uh, I decide I'm, one of my friends, he introduces me to a, like a full contact style of karate and invites me to give it a try. You know, he shows me a few videos and it, it looks pretty cool. You know, you're wearing a helmet, full body armor, and it's just full contact fighting basically. So yeah, I decided to drop down, give it a shot, and boy, did I love it. The classes were tough as hell though. I remember almost wanting to throw up on more than one occasion, I can assure you. However, my fitness skyrocketed big time by switching to full contact karate. And the other thing that helped me get rid of my, rid of my asthma, I discovered a few years later while experimenting with my home workout routine, I came across this training mask. You can see it right here. I've left it here for you. It's called a, it is called an elevation uh, training mask. And basically what it does is that it makes, it basically makes it harder for you to, to breathe and forces your pulmonary muscles, the muscles which allow you to take oxygen in, it forces those muscles to work harder so they can become stronger. And this training tool was the key aspect that, that allowed me to vanquish my asthma once and for all. Combining this training at home using this mask with the brutal, intensive karate classes I was taking in full contact karate, these two elements, you combine them and it just slaughtered my asthma. And to this day, I am fi I'm a fighting fit, you know, lean, mean, punching. Well, maybe I'm a, I'm a kicking machine. I, don't, I prefer to kick rather than punch, actually. So I'm a lean, mean, kicking machine, I guess. <sighs> but yes, this, is, this training mask is not for the faint of heart, however. There are some caveats I would like to discuss when trying to use one of these. So I did something very, very dangerous looking back, now that I think about it, with this mask. I used to, basically, I used to commute to work by bike back when I was working full time. And uh, basically, I would wear this mask on my commutes. And the first time I did it, I did this, there's quite a large hill, a hill on my return journey, and I, I swear I almost fainted. I, I managed to get to the top of this hill, and then I couldn't breathe. 
and I couldn't, I, could, I didn't even have the strength to take the mask off me. I, just, I couldn't move. I was on the bike and I just, I just could not move at all. And you know that sort of tunnel vision effect? I had a bit of that going on as well. And it was pretty dangerous because I was basically in the middle of the road. <laughs> and my bike was just sort of crawling along at a snail's pace. And I, I thought I was going to die, honestly. I just, I couldn't breathe and I was just, I was just suffocating. But eventually, I got my breath back and I recovered and I was able to, you know, veer off the side of the road and then, yeah, carry on. And I've also, I've also had a couple of other, you know, mishaps wearing with this mask while wearing it while commuting. So, although this training, you know, hugely, hugely helped in getting rid of my asthma, Nowadays, I only wear the mask in a safe environment in my home gym. I no longer, you know, use it on the road because it, it really is just too dangerous. And there's several different difficulties that you can use with the mask. You see these valves here. You can um, basically interchange them to, to, to determine how much air you can take in at any given time. So, if you do end up acquiring one of, the, one of these masks, definitely, definitely recommend you start slow with it. You know, get a feel for what it's going to do to you. Don't jump into the deep end and set it to like maximum difficulty, <laughs> because you will, even like you will, you will probably regret it. Like I, I fortunately was smart enough at least to when I was when I first started commuting with the mask I I put it on the easiest difficulty like I can't even imagine what would have happened to me if I had set it to max difficulty and made it all the way to the top of that hill I, I, I don't even want to think about it man it would have been a like an absolute disaster oh man but yes this mask and the intensive karate training, these two things just killed my asthma for good. So if you, if you are a sufferer of asthma, I would strongly recommend you consider getting one of these masks and committing yourself to a training routine. And if you don't know where to start with your training, you can check out my latest book, Home Workout. I will link that to the video below. And that video, and that, my, my book, it describes my personal training routine that I do at home. And this, and I'm, I'm a, I'm an athlete of sorts, you know, I do a lot of sort of combat-based fighting sports. So this, this workout routine is designed to get you into, you know, fantastic shape, you know, you'll develop a very lean, strong, muscular body. So if you're not sure where to start with your exercise or your training routine, definitely check that out as well. And that is a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day or night or whatever. And mission complete. Signing out.